Good morning, church. Welcome to St. John Baptist Church. My name is Crystal Lassiter, and I am your worship leader for this morning. We will now have our opening, our opening selection by Youth for Christ, followed by a scripture by Sister Caden Haskins, and prayer by Sister Lauren Morris.
as you, your youth, but be an expect, exp, example to the believers in the world, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in the faith, in purity. First Timothy 4 through, 4 through 12. Amen. Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord you God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Matthew 22 through 37. Amen. 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 Dr. Lassiter will deliver the revival message at our Mother Church, First Baptist, this coming Thursday, September 21st. Service begins at 7 p.m. He will be accompanied by the gospel combined choir, ushers, and officers. The youth ministry will host the first session of Just for Girls and Boys to Gents today after morning worship. Students in grades six through 12 are invited to meet in the fellowship hall for lunch, and parents of participating students are asked to meet in the upstairs commons for a brief informational meeting. For more information, you can see Bianca Phillips or Barbara Haywood. Men's Day will be observed next Sunday, September 24th at 10.30 a.m. Our own Dr. Greg Edison will deliver the message Choir rehearsal for a special Men's Day Choir will be held at 6 p.m. tomorrow, September 18th. Pastor Lassiter will lead a motivational men's book study on the book Kingdom Man, Every Man's Destiny, Every Woman's Dream by Pastor Tony Evans. The study will be held at 7 p.m. on Monday evenings beginning September 25th in the upstairs commons. Sign up in the fellowship hall today after service or contact Kenneth Haywood at 757-880-7167 to obtain a book. Books will be available for pickup at the church on Wednesday evening from six until seven. Tickets for a celebratory tea party for First Lady Tamika Lassiter will be sold in the fellowship hall today after morning worship. The event will be held Saturday, October 21st at Colonial Heritage Club. The cost is $50 per adult and $25 for children. Leaders of ministries that are currently operational are asked to email Deaconess Tamika Lassiter the following information. Name of ministry or committee, contact information of chair or leader, a summary of what the ministry or committee is about, and what the organization does within the church. Her email is tamika.lassiter at gmail.com. Tamika is spelled T-A-M-E-C-H-A. -E Little Zion Baptist Church has invited St. John to witness the initial sermon and licensing of Minister Rachel Williams today at 2.30 at the church. Little Zion is at 8625 Pocahontas Trail. 
Village Initiative for Equity in Education will present Voices of Integration, a film presentation and panel discussion with black students from the class of 1969, which was WJC's first fully integrated graduating class. This will be held Saturday, October 7th from 2 until 4 p.m. at the Williamsburg Library. Please remember to keep our sick, shut in, and bereaved families in your prayers. If you are a loved one is in need of prayer, please contact the church office at 757-229-0759. Our known sick and shut in are Deacon Wilbert Hill, Sister Vera K. Wright, Trustee Emeritus Lucille Mankins, Chaplain Cynthia Lasseter, and Brother William Tose, who we are happy to have here today worshiping with us. Amen. Also, please keep Sister Long in your prayers, who lost her brother recently. We have an announcement from the Transition Committee. Fall is approaching and respiratory infections are on the rise in our communities and throughout the United States. Some of the most common ones that we are hearing about are the common cold, COVID-19, flu, and RSV. Let's remember to practice the following safety measures to keep ourselves healthy during this season. Wear a mask in public places, cover your nose and mouth when coughing or sneezing, Use a tissue or your elbow, not your hands, then throw away the used tissue. Always wash your hands after coughing, sneezing, or blowing your nose. Wash your hands often with clean running water and soap. Scrub your hands for at least 20 seconds. Use alcohol-based hand sanitizer when you don't have access to soap and water. Don't touch your eyes, nose, or mouth. This may help keep germs out of your body. Stay away from other people with respiratory infections. Also limit close contact with others if you are sick. Avoid crowds during flu season. Don't smoke and don't let others smoke in your home or car. Get all necessary vaccinations, including the flu vaccine. Eat a diet rich in vitamins and minerals. Routinely sleep at least seven hours a night. Exercise on a regular basis and meditate to reduce, reduce your stress levels. The Transition Committee wants to maintain a healthy and safe environment for anyone who enters the doors of this church. If anyone has questions or concerns, you can contact a committee member for assistance. Thank you. We will now we will now have offering followed by selections by the Children's Choir and Youth for Christ. Our pastor, Reverend Carlin Lassiter, will deliver the sermon. It was a pleasure being your worship leader. Amen. 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 You know, sometimes the Spirit of God moves in the midst of a program. And there's one here that has um, been a testimony. And he is in the back and that is, uh, we all know him as Coach Toze and he would just like to have a few words. Good morning, church. Good morning. It certainly is good to be here in the house of the Lord. And I can tell you that uh, when things are taken from you, that's when you realize you need to go into the house of the Lord. Uh, in July, I was fine, having a good time, doing what I do, and pain set in, and here I am today. But I can tell you that I know that I was lifted up by this church, I was lifted up by my players, and I was lifted up by other people, and I'm so grateful and thankful for that. Uh, Sometimes you don't feel like going on. That's a song people say. I never felt that way, but I can tell you there is a need here for us to pray for those that we don't see 
uh, that we hear about, and certainly those in the nursing homes. Uh, I was there rehabbing, and I was able to see the quality of life that they have, and I know that there's a need for prayer. Again, I thank you for your prayers, and I'm so grateful and thankful to be here today. Thank you. Amen, amen. Deacons, please take charge. Shake it, pass down, and run it over. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
into this house come into this place fill us up Lord God but we need you we need you we need your glory
Lord, allow us to decrease so that you may increase. My, my, my. We serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you. Praise you, God. We give you the highest praise. We give you the highest praise. We couldn't do it without you, Lord. We wouldn't have been here today, Lord, if it wasn't for you. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. 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 It's good to see everyone. Being in the house of the Lord is like medicine to the soul. Being amongst each other in the name of Jesus can turn a situation around. Even if the situation is still standing there, it's still been turned around. God is good and God is in this place. And God is in each and every one of us. Let us just continue to yield to the Lord as the Lord speaks to our hearts and speaks to our minds. As we look around, we see miracles, we see blessings, we see overcoming, we see triumphant comebacks in life. We see so many things that we know that if it had not been for the Lord, If it had not been for the Lord. So many of us have been on our sick bed. And that resurrection power of Jesus raised us right back up. Gave us a testimony. Gave us something to be thankful for. If anybody in the house has something to be thankful for, just say hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Someone in the house has something to be thankful for. The Lord has brought you through thus far. Hallelujah. I certainly want to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for ordering our steps in his way and allowing us to come and just sit before him and, and bask in glory at what God has done in this day, this service, this experience. Someone knows that it, God showed his light through our young people this morning. Amen. The youth for Christ and this children's choir blessed our souls. I don't care how young or how old. I'm going to tell you, I was bursting with joy, you know, to see what our young people can do in the life of a people. And what God has shown us through our young people is nothing but God showing us God's own creation and how God can use anyone, young and old. Amen. Thank you, you for Christ. Y'all sang y'all's hearts out. And I'm going to tell you, this children's choir, good gracious. I 
I know what can happen when you put a microphone in, inside their hand. <laughs> Good gracious. Thank you so much, and thank you for letting God use you to those that uh, were our worship leader who are on our program, Sister Crystal Lassiter, you did an amazing job. Caden Haskins, you did an awesome job. That fervent and strong prayer by Lauren Morris, awesome job, cousin. And then uh, we even had an amazing job by our assistant clerk, uh, uh, church clerk, Deidre Baytop. She did them announcements, didn't she? Amen, amen, amen. And as we look around and we see the service of our young people, we see our ushers. And they took charge. And they did an amazing job in the display of what God can do through anyone. And those, this is our future. This is our future. And they're shining bright. And that makes so many of us happy because we know that God will do something from generation to generation. And we know that everything is safe and secure. Amen. You know, this is an amazing day for me because I was thinking about time and age in general. And um, I got a note last night and it said that uh, Brother Clyde and Sister Riddell King are celebrating today 72 years of wedding bliss. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. I don't think there's too many people in this house today that can say they've done 72 years of anything. <laughs> 72 years of wedded bliss. God is good. God is good. Woo! Won't he do it? Won't he do it? It was certainly good to see Coach Jose today. God has brought him from a mighty, mighty long way. And for be able to come and testify in and, and power and strength shows a whole lot, you know. Let us continue to keep our sick and our shut-in in our prayers, especially those who are considered isolated, those that are in nursing homes and convalescent centers and those that are at home that can't be here. Um, just keep them in your prayers. That goes a long way, a long way. So continue to keep them in mind. Give them a call. Give them a quick visit if you can. Amen? Amen. 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 It's good to see my good neighbor, Brother Wayne Bur Burrell. He said he'd be here today, and he showed up just as sharp as ever, too. Amen. Amen. I see back in the back my cousin, Sheila, and how you doing? How you doing? And Janelle, it's, it's good to see so many people here today. And for those online, it's, it's good to feel your presence online, even though we don't see you here in person. But we know that your presence is felt because we know that you're online. And, and for those online, make sure you, you put a comment in, maybe even perhaps share the service so that others can get it. Uh, more people get it that may not be attached or have liked or joined St. John's site, but the Word of God is good, and what we've seen today, let us all share it. Amen? Amen. 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 I ask that, that we uh, continue to pray for my father as he uh, just had heart surgery, and it was successful, um, and he's doing okay. They'll have to do another procedure within the month. Um, but just continue to keep him in prayer. He's in good spirits. Amen? Amen. And all those who are sore and those who have just had procedures and, and are still making it are here today, we just want to say, God has your back. Just keep trusting the process. Do what the doctors have asked you to do. And, 
and also for, for those that, that are aware. There are a few sicknesses going around, so we ask that you just be careful. Continue to, to wash your hands, and, and um, if you want to wear a mask, you can. Um, we just ask that you just be cautious as you go out and about. Amen? Amen. Amen. Technology staff, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, deacons and trustees, you know you do so much work, and I can't thank you enough. Amen. Amen. Well, the children have pretty much already preached the sermon and what they have shown us so far. But the Lord has uh, ordered my steps to Matthew 18th chapter, verses 1 through 5. Matthew 18th chapter, verses 1 through 5. If you are able to stand, please do. If you can't, God understands. The text will also be on the screen if you don't have your devices or your, your Bibles. I'll be reading from the International Children's Bible this morning. At that time, the followers came to Jesus and asked, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a little child to him. He stood the child before the followers. Then he said, I tell you the truth. You must change and become like little children. If you don't do this, you will never enter into the kingdom of heaven. The greatest person in the kingdom of heaven is the one who makes himself humble like this child. Whoever accepts a little child in my name accepts me. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we now come to you, Lord God, in full worship. For Lord God, your spirit has been ushered in this place. And once again, right now, Lord God, we ask that you fill this place, fill every heart and every mind. For Lord God, we love you and we adore you as being our Father. Yet, Lord, sometimes we may not remember all things that we are still a child, even if we're an adult, a child of the Most High. And Lord God, sometimes when we do things, it may not be pleasing to you. But right now, Lord God, we come to you humbly asking that you remove all sin, Lord God, all wrongdoings, Lord God, anything, Lord God, that we have missed the mark on, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you forgive us of all these sins. And we ask you, Lord God, to forgive us in confession, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to be able to come before your throne and confess and to just have a little talk with you and just tell you all about our problems. Lord God, now as we come before you, Lord God, to hear of your word, we ask right now, Lord God, that your spirit rest upon us, that you will open up our hearts and our minds, that you will touch us, Lord God, and fill us, Lord God, where we have a void. Touch us, Lord God, and strengthen us, Lord God, where we may be weak. Lord God, allow us to know what your mandates are, Lord God. Let your words of your, let the word, Lord God, be prescriptive, Lord God. That it may give us healing, Lord God, and also allow this world to see who you are. And more importantly, God, to see who your son Jesus is. Heavenly Father, we ask right now that you let this preacher speak only as you have called him to speak. Order my words. Touch my tongue. Allow me, Lord God, to give you the honor and the glory of having your way and your will. Lord God, touch these young people, Lord God, in which you have inspired this preacher to speak to. Allow them to hear with clarity and understanding. And Father God, I ask that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and our Redeemer, in the precious and mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 
my beloved young people and St. John friends and those that are online, if you would allow me to speak just for a few moments today, I would like to preach and teach uh, to everyone, especially the youth, on the theme, all my life, all my life. My beloved, when we look at the text that was just read, it reminded me of a tr traditional African folklore named Malcolm's Beautiful Daughters. In this folk tale, you will see that Malcolm has two daughters. His two daughters, Melissa and Natasha, both of whom are beautiful on the outside. The one daughter, Melissa, though, however, is very unkind on the inside. She is ill-tempered and bullies her sister when her father isn't around. She thinks that one day she will be the queen and Natasha will be her servant. Someone in the house has been in a relationship like this before. Natasha, on the other hand, the other daughter, is a sweet soul who is known for her kindness by the villagers. This, of course, makes Melissa even meaner to her. Yeah. Natasha loves to garden and she befriends a cute little garden snake who she names Dre. Early one morning, a messenger arrives from the city telling Malcolm that the great king wishes to choose a wife. Melissa tries to tell their father that she is willing to go alone, as Natasha would be too sad to be apart from their father. Malcolm disagrees and they all prepare themselves for the journey to the city. Melissa wakes in the middle of the night and starts on the journey by herself, determined to be the first one to get there. Along the way, she meets a hungry boy who asks her to share her food. Disgusted, Melissa yells at the boy for standing in her way and moves on. Next, Melissa, she comes across an old woman who warns her to be kind to the man who comes across her path. Melissa is outraged at this woman for trying to give her advice and ignores what she says. The next morning, the other sister, Natasha, and the others realize that Melissa is now missing but figures that she had already began the journey when they saw her footprints on the path that led to the city to where she wanted to be the first to meet this king. Along the way, Natasha sees the, the same hungry boy and gives him a part of her lunch. Later, when the old woman tells Natasha which way to go, she gives the woman a pouch of sunflower seeds to show her appreciation for what she was doing. But when they arrived at the gate of the city, they find Melissa crying and sobbing and within sadness, and she tells them of a cruel snake with five heads. But Natasha goes ahead anyways. When she arrives at the king's chamber, she sees her garden snake friend, Dre, he had changed into the king. He tells Natasha that it was he that was in the garden. He tells her that it was he that was also the hungry boy and that it was he that disguised himself as an old woman and that because she was so kind, he believed that she was the most beautiful daughter in the land. Then they got married and Natasha had become the queen with her sister Melissa as the servant in the household. Young people, it is important to know and understand that both of Malcolm's daughters are beautiful, but one is bad-tempered and one is kind. When the king of the land asked the daughter to appear before him so that he could choose a queen, the prideful and bad-tempered daughter decides to sneak out in the night so that she could get there first. 
Trey, this story or folk tale can teach us that as you grow into elementary school, that as you grow into middle school and as you become high schoolers or even college or even enter into the workplace, you will find many opportunities to show your true character. As in the story, children, you saw that the kind daughter was uh, the one who follows the same paths, or she continued to be kind, humble, and generous, and found out that there was an awesome prize at the end of the story. I'll tell you the truth, sometimes it appears that the humble and the meek and the sincere and the, the mild uh, young people may not be receiving the same blessings as the proud or the arrogant. They may not be receiving the same prize as the aggressive or the forceful. But I came to tell you that if you trust God and show compassion and generosity, then you are trusting in God's process of building you up to appreciate and to be able to receive with gladness this awesome prize at the end of our life's story. In other words, in order to please God, we must for all of our life continue to be kind, humble, and generous no matter what comes against you. Children, God loves you just as you are. God loves you just as you are. On the contrary, not all of the peers and not all of your schoolmates will love you just like you are. And in an attempt to be able to please everybody, you may try to be like someone else. But remember this, God loves you just like you are. God loves you just like you are because God created you. It's okay to be cool, but don't try to be too cool. It's okay to be more mature than everyone else, but remember the other children are still growing in their own selves. It's okay to be in charge of everything, but remember that God loves other children that are not in charge too. Amen? It is awesome to have the best grades the fastest smile, or maybe the strongest arm, but remember that the other children may not have that gift, but God still sees them as gifted. It's important to know this, young people, that it's okay to be yourself and to take your time growing up because Jesus is using the lessons from a child in this scripture to help older people to know how to please God and love each other. That's right. Uh, Jesus said that you must change and become like little children. And I come to tell you that if you don't do this, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The greatest person in the kingdom of heaven is the one who makes himself humble like a child. This sermon is for the children on the weekend. This right here is for the children on the weekend who may not think that you have homework today. This right here is for the children that are here today and they ain't thinking about school until tomorrow. But however, young people, you have an extremely important job to do today. You have a task and you have some homework. And we, the adults, if I may speak on behalf of the adults, we demand of you and we need of you to keep smiling. We need you to keep singing. We need you to keep praising the Lord. We need you to keep having fun. We need you to keep being silly and we need you to keep on loving each other, loving your classmates, because that is the example that Jesus showed us in how to be adults and how we can get to the kingdom of heaven. Because God wants us to get to be in this kingdom where we can live in complete harmony. But God showed us this morning a bit in a piece of heaven right here on earth. God level set everybody in here that the way the children did it today is the way that God wants us to be with each other as adults. 
God wants us to love each other and hug each other and be friendly with each other. God wants us to be like a child, in a sense, so that we can all go and, and be with God forever in this kingdom of heaven. High schoolers, when you read the text closely, you will see that the disciples were anxious uh, of who would be viewed as the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. You will see older youth that, uh, that after listening to the disciples fussing, listening to them fighting and arguing over status and fame, Jesus simply uses a small child, perhaps your little sister or brother or your little cousin, as an example. Jesus then says, and, and get this, if you ever want to get to heaven, if you ever, ever want to get to heaven, not get a job, not get a title, not get a state championship, or get that fly drip or clothing, like your favorite rapper or your favorite actor, God said that in order to get into heaven, we must change our ways and become as simple as a loving child. Jesus was essentially saying, young people, that having the kingdom of God, which is a place where we will live forever, this place is worth more than all of our possessions and powers combined. And I want you young people to know right now, I want you to know that we could be homeless, that we could be penniless, and we can have nothing to our names. But if we have God, but if we have God, we have a greater treasure than all of the world's treasure combined together. Young people, I want you to know. I want you to know that the good news is that we don't have to sell everything to get to heaven. We don't have to perfect everything to get to heaven. We don't have to be like someone else because God wants you to be yourself. Children, I want you to know that all of my life, all of my life, the pastor, I've tried and tried and tried. And I have fought and fought and fought against the temptation to be what other people have tried to make me be like. But when I look back and wonder, when I look back and wonder of where God has brought me from and what if God has taught me, I'm so glad that it was me becoming the better me because no one, not no one could be the better me than me because that God had created me to be me. So I became the best that God created me to be by trying to be myself by trying to stand to the standards of what my dad told me when I went to college. And he said, boy, just be yourself. Don't try to be like anybody else. I know somebody heard it. We don't say that much anymore. Just be yourself when you go to college. Be yourself when you go to elementary school. Be yourself when you go to middle school. And be yourself when you go to high school. If you be yourself. You will find that people will love you for who you are and not who you're trying to be. You will find that all your life you can sing the same song that the psalmist sang. You will understand that you can sing this song because God made you wonderfully. You will be able to sing this song because God made you in his own image. You will be able to sing this song because God was the one that breathed his breath into your nostrils and gave you life and gave you a mind and, and he knew everything about you and he made you specifically for his purpose. You will be able to sing this song of the psalmist that says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made, marvelous in your works and that my soul knows very well. Young people, I just came to tell you, to be yourself, 
Because who you are is powerful. Who you are right now in this space, right now in this place, right now at the age that you are, you are giving us the keys to the kingdom. You are showing us something that many of us have never seen in the text. It was you that inspired this text to be preached today. Because if we really look at the text and we really apply it to ourselves, he said, what we saw today, the praise and the worship, the dedication of going to practice, the dedication of getting up on a Saturday when you've been at school all week, or coming on a Friday, the dedication of the, of, of the musicians that came. This right here shows us, as adults as well, how to get into heaven. This isn't about a particular age, so to speak. But this is about the humbleness, the sincereness, before the world has put corruption on us. And I know that somebody in here has gone their whole life trying to find peace. And many of us that have known and have found it, have found that you can just be like a child, be happy, continue to dance, continue to play, continue to watch cartoons sometimes, continue to go by your boy's house. A lot of people go see uh, Mr. King all the time. You know, continue to be able to be in relationship because that right there is the kingdom of heaven right here on earth to be able to visit and love on each other. Jesus showed us through the example of a child. And I just think it's so beautiful because the day we saw our young people do exactly what Jesus did in this text. Amen, amen, amen. Doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. Let us all stand. If there be one, if there be one, if there be some young man, some child, some adult that has decided to allow Jesus to take the wheel of life and to steer you in the right direction, all you have to do is accept him. All you have to do is right there in your heart, just, just say to in yourself and just say to the Lord, you can pray. You can say it out loud, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I want you to come on into my life. I want you to make things right. I want you to produce in me this, this man that you have called me to be when I get older. I want you to nurture in me and produce in me this strong woman that you are creating right now in this person. Bring the best out of me that I have. Bring the best out of me that you have put in me. Lord, I just want to do your will. If there be one that has decided to allow God to just come into your heart, you can just come on down. You can just come on down. If there's one that's nervous, someone can come down with you. If there's someone that's online, you can come on down proverbially. You can come on down. Just give this church a call at 757-229-0759. Just give us a call or go on our website and, and, and go to the Contact Us tab and Right in there, I just want to receive the Lord. If you need prayer, just go to it and just let us know. And then we can contact you and pray for you. We can even welcome you as from afar into this house of God, if there be one. If there be one that wants to come by baptism, by letter, or if there's one that's just visiting and just needs to have a church home. You belong to a church, but you're here for a while. You just want to be a part of this body. You can join by watch care, if there be one. Just come on down. If there be one, just come on down. Just come on down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there be one. If there be one. Amen. Amen. You can remain standing as we dismiss. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we have seen and we have been witnesses, Lord God, of your glory today. 
You have come into this house and you have touched the hearts and minds of your people. Lord, we feel encouragement today. We feel prosperity today. We feel healing today. And Lord, we want to thank you. We want to thank you, Lord God, for just one more time, one more day, to be amongst each other, to worship in this place that we call the church. Lord God, right now, we ask that you remove the four walls from this church and pour into us, Lord God, so that we may pour outside of this church, that we may spread the gospel of good news, that we may go out and about, Lord God, helping and healing and praying for each other. Lord, we want to thank you. We want to praise you. And we want to say hallelujah because you are an awesome God. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. Let us all say, Amen. Amen. Go in peace.